Hey everyone, welcome back. Welcome back to MS Inspire Workshop. And today we have with us Vedant Pahel, who is a beta Microsoft Learn student ambassador. And apart from that, he's also a data scientist. He's, he's a he, he has appeared in pretty in as a speaker in pretty events and is also a chair in IEEE's chapter at his own college Raisoni. Okay, so so keeping up our introduction, today he's talking he's going to talk about ASP.NET web applications and I'll give the mic to Vedant so he can explain his exactly what he's going to explain. Hey Vedant. Uh, hi Sundareshwar and thank you for that lovely introduction. So today I'm pretty much going today. to cover about how to create an ASP.NET web application. What are web apps first of all and then how can you create one and deploy it using Microsoft Azure. Um, I'll be using the .NET Framework. So let's get started. So about me, I am Vedant. I'm a beta Microsoft student partner or let's say Microsoft student learn ambassador. Um, I'm founder at Data Deals and let's get started. So you will learn about how to create and deploy your first ASP.NET Core .NET Framework actually. That should be Framework. I'll change it in the final P3. .NET Framework Web App to Azure App Services. And also how to create the resource group which consists of web application hosting and all. So let's go further. You'll require Visual Studio 2019. 2017 should be enough, but it's better to have the latest version and also Azure subscription to deploy your web app. So what are web apps? Well, sometimes people have confusion about the difference between website and web apps. So website is pretty much you know, static and if we, say, if we say a dynamic website, we are talking about the graphics and stuff. But what is web app? Web app provides you additional functionality. It is something like an application software that you run on your computer or your mobile phone but which is, and in this case, it is all together hosted on online where you can just go to the website and check, use that web app. So that's more function, functionality. Some of the examples are like those online cloud software that you use, uh, which are based on um, like uh, the document setting, like Office Online, which we use for editing, editing the document, the shared documents or some form filling websites which generate a kind of application form for you and kind of things which are not just websites which are like website but has extra functionality so let's check and the advantage is that it is not stored on your local operating system so it does not require some, any kind of pre thing like some some there's some software which wherein they speak that it requires the operating system of eight or above, 10 or above, and something like that. But in case of web apps, you don't have any prior requirement. You just need to have an internet and an updated internet browser. That should be fine enough. So let's get started. So I'll be covering live through Visual Studio and will explain you how to create a web app. Uh, but after after a while, I mean, I'll be taking screenshots and add, adding it to presentation. So the final presentation will also have all these steps of how to do the same. So let me navigate to Visual Studios. The next thing we do is we'll go to our Visual Studio 2019 and uh, we'll create a new project. So I'll click on here, new project. And what we need to create is ASP.NET Web App using .NET Framework. So you'll have option over here for ASP.NET Core Web Application, but we'll be using .NET Framework, not .NET Core. So let's search for ASP.NET Web Application.NET Framework using C Sharp. So see, there, there are many options. Like in, you can create ASP.NET Core Web App using F, F Sharp. You can create ASP.NET Application.Framework using Visual Basics. But we don't want to create using Visual Basics. We want to create using C Sharp. So ASP.NET Web Application.NET Framework using C Sharp. That's the one I'm explaining right now. So we'll name our project. So let's go for um, ticket. Oh, okay, event ticket creation. Okay, and go to next. Next, next, next. Now over here, we'll go for a web form which comes with a template 
uh, an empty one won't come with a template. It will be like totally empty project, but web form will come with a template. Over here in the right hand side, you have advanced option. Like you can ask for Docker support. You can create unit test files. You can add MVC, web API, stuff like that. But let's go for a basic one and don't opt for any any of these advanced option. Let's create a simple web form. Create. So the project project is getting created. Let's have a look when once it is getting created. Once it gets created. So this is your home page of the project. Now there are many files on the right hand side inside your project. But before we edit anything, let's see what the project looks like by default. So on the top, you can see a run button, a green run button. When I click on this run button, the project will run and show us how it looks like by default for now. I'll click on run button. It will start building the project and then it will open the project in my browser, in my default browser, which is Microsoft Edge. So it is getting loaded. Let's see how it looks like by default. So as you can see, by default, we have this three pages over here, home, about, contact. We are, we are right now on the home page, which has information about ASP.NET, how to get started, web hosting and stuff like that. We have other pages like about and contact, and we will change this to create our own web app. So I'll close it and let's start making changes. So on the right hand side, so here are two things. We have pages, like we have tabs over here. We can add more tabs if you want. And the thing is, each tab has two things, the front end and the web uh, in, in the back end. The front end is created using HTML and the back end is created using C Sharp. So you should know both the programming, like, like both the languages. You should know how to use HTML and also C Sharp. So let's go to site.master, which you have in your project file, which is like a main file, which keeps all the things together. So as you can see on here, in here, it's a HTML format and we have title, right? We can change the title. Let's change it to MS Inspire. And um, it we have defined what things we want, the script, the bootstrap, and stuff like that, which are there inside your file, which, which, uh, which Visual Studio has created by default for us. No need to change it. It should be fine without it. And over here, if you can see, we have a list which speaks about what pages we have in our navigation bar. So when we run, we ran the code last time, we saw that we had three main tabs, which is home, about, and contact. And let's add new one, which is, so basically the web app, which I'm creating right now, the example web app is the one where we have a MS Inspire web app, uh, where one can register for our upcoming event. So let's say LI, which, is, which stands for list. If you are familiar with uh, HTML, you must know about it. And we are saying run at equal to server ref, which is the link which where we should provide the link for admit card. Or let's say registration, register, register because that will be our register tab. And um, we, we'll have to create a new page. So I'll go on my home, on my, on this, in the solution explorer in the right hand side, right click on my project, click on add, click on new item, and I'm going to add a new page, right? I need to add a web form. So it created a simple web form for me, which is our admit card page. I'll save it. I'll rename this web form, the web form.aspx. I'll rename it as register. I'll save the whole thing and run the project again. When we run it again, now you can see see that okay it directly went to the register page when we run it again and go to the home page we have this home page and as you can see on the navigation bar we have an, one more tab added which is called register and when when we click on it we go to another page which is a slash register but we haven't added anything right far now so it is empty 
let's add things to it now before adding let's go to our home page which is the default and um, the thing is you need to edit the front front uh, front end right you need to edit how it looks like so you have an option where you don't need to code it like if you don't know html it's fine you should know just basics of html even without that you can design your web web page by clicking on this design button on in the bottom when i click on this design button it will load my home page in this format and now i can just change it and type ms inspire and in the tagline i can say um i can say register for our register for our upcoming event using this button it should happen so let's change this button as well and say register and this should be fine i, I mean i don't want these things I can delete all these things and my life should be simpler without these things. So I deleted the content but I didn't delete these segments that I have. So I can even delete those. And now I have just a uh, just MS Inspire register for our upcoming event with this button. I'll click double click on this right button, register button. and as you can see okay i'll go on split which shows me the design and the code at the same time and when i click on register so it will take me to the segment where this register button is added so as you can see this is a button which we added uh, a h e r f where the link which we have provided is asp.net like www.asp.net so register button will take us to that place but we don't want to go to that place instead we want to go to the register page so i'll just add a slash and register i'll save it and let's run it again so now when we run our project we go to our home page and on on our home page we just have ms inspire register for our upcoming event with a button called register when i click on register button it will take me to the slash register page which is far now blank will add things to it but now the home page is working fine enough with a button the next thing which we need to do is change the register page so i'll go in the on the right hand side with solution explorer i have my this register page i'll go to my register page this is my html format of its register page i'll click on design this is blank for now but let's add things to it so let's say register for our upcoming coming sorry coming event okay and as you can see on the left hand side i have a toolbox if you don't see this toolbox you can add this toolbox by clicking on view and adding things which you want like solution explorer toolbox over here and you can add those things so in toolbox you can just simply drag and drop the things you want So right now I want what I want is a uh, uh, a table because a table will help me put my things in place. So I'll go and add this table. I want a better table. Yeah, this the HTML table. So I'll go and add this table. By default, the table that we got was three into three into three, like three into three. Sorry, not into three. Uh, three rows and three columns but let's go to split and delete some i just want a two column table so i'll delete the columns from my table i deleted the columns from my table i saved it again as you can see now i just have a two column table like so oh, i didn't delete one now as you can see i just have two columns and three rows so we can use this to create our form like inside this table we can use this table to create our form the first thing i wish to take is from the person is name then the second thing i wish to take from that person is 
email id and the third thing i wish to take from that person is organization so we are creating a form right now right and now this is my name i'm asking for name and now i'll take an input button so you can see i want to add a text box so this is the text box i'll add it here let's stretch it i'll add another text box for email id and another text box for organization right uh, is this it no we want to add a, we want to add here a button which should be a submit button right for that we'll have to un- either we can add the submit button over here directly or you can add a new row to the table and add a submit button inside it adding a new row will be a better option because that will provide you an option to uh, nicely place the submit button with in a uniform in a uniformity with your table we'll add pr which is the option for adding a new row and dd is the option for adding a new column and let's save it as you can see over here we have got our uh, new row with a new column and let's add a button to it so in the left hand side i have this tool box and i'll just drag a button which is named as button so let's rename it and call it submit so i'm renaming it through the code that i have in the script format the button name is button dot like button 1 but it is renamed like it shows the display name is submit okay so this is how our page looks like the front end of our register page looks like for now and now what we want is that when person goes to the goes to our website our web app the person fills the name registration id like email id organization and when the person submits the form an admit card should be printed or a registration ticket should be printed with his or her detail so it should be printed using this button so I'll click re- double click on this <coughs> so when i cl- double click on this button it takes me to an to the register.aspx.cs which is the back end of our register page now what we need to take, do the first thing is when someone clicks on that button what will happen first of all we take the input from the user like we need to take the uh, like we have the person we want everything what the person has inputted in the form to come here so i'll say variable i'm defining a variable name which is equal to uh which is just a hold down variable name which is our new variable for the like we were taking input from the um, form right the form which we created now whatever person inputs from there should come here so i'm saying variable name equals to because by default everything taken is not uh, in a specific data type so we'll say that convert to convert right dot to because name should be in string format parenthesis this dot like this pointer dot it should point to our text box which we created back then like the text box which we have dragged in our front end will say text box so you ha- you have option which is text box 1 2 3 because we have uh, dragged three text box so the first one is for name so i'll say text box 1 dot text so what i want is what i'm saying is over here in the code is that define a variable name which should take the text from text box 1 convert it into string and store inside the variable name so why does it show text box does not contain definition for text next mention let's see it shows error for now but let's see it should be fine afterwards oh it should be capital t sorry yeah it should be fine now yeah so another variable which we need to create over here is the variable email because we are also taking email ids 
and we'll say convert to string because even even email is string is dot text box to dot text right don't forget the parenthesis uh, closing the parenthesis and adding adding the semicolon at last and the third thing that we want to create want to add is the organization so again it will be organization equals to convert again it will be string in case you are adding phone number or something in that case you will need uh, 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 in that case you will need numeric data so you can convert into to, into int or a double integer which is like bigger so variable organization equals to convert dot string this text box 3 dot text right now we have taken all the input that person has added on our form in our front and in our back end now we would play with this right so the thing is when someone fills the form, our aim is a ticket should be downloaded in a PDF format. So that that means we need to write a document. So you can we are, we are going to add a package over here. So when I when I click on when I right click on my project, I have option to add or manage new get packages. So I'll click on manage new get packages. I'll say I text. Okay, I need to go to browse. I don't have it installed, so I'll go to browse and click on install iText Sharp into my project. So it is getting installed. It will ask me for permission, like um, the terms and condition and stuff. So I'll say okay. I'll say I accept, and it's getting installed. So the document, so this specific package, which is called iText Sharp, is a package used for writing into a document. So I'm I've created this. And let's go back. So here we have, I have added a piece of code over here, as you can see. So what happens is we are first defining a string, which is the string header. And this is the file name of our file. So let's say the ticket file, because we want the file to be downloaded and named as ticket. And then we have this try and exception. So inside try, I'm opening a new document. So I'm saying a document which is PDF document, a new document which page size should be A4 with margins of these. I'm using the PDF writer. So PDF writer at get instance and PDF doc open. So I'm opening the document. Once the document has been opened, what I need to do is I need to add a new paragraph which should be aligned center. We should add a new chunk to it. And what I'm saying is PDF.add ticket. So it should say ticket over there. Then adding a new line, adding a new phrase, which is a new line. So the first line. So this was the piece of code. So basically, this this whole piece of code is for editing our document. And uh, the first paragraph is for creating the document and opening it. The second paragraph is to giving an head header to the document. Then this line of code just gives a space, a line, a new line. And the, this one is the first line. So what we are saying is uh, paragraphs or text is equals to new paragraph, which should say uh, name, which is name, because name is the variable that we have defined over here. So it will enter name over here. Right. Then adding another line of code, which is paragraph. Equals to new paragraph. And um, I again add a new. So this dollar sign that you see is added for the placeholder that we are telling that there is a placeholder inside the string so dollar sign uh, quotation open and then we are saying email id uh, which is our variable called email id the local variable 
and similarly paragraph text equals to new paragraph again the dollar sign quotation open organization and now we are saying the variable organization right uh yeah sorry and this is all it this is what we have added this should be text 1 text 2 text 2 So the, this is the paragraph text. This is the paragraph text one. This is the paragraph text text two, and this specific line of code is saying that add these text into our document. So we have added the text into document. I'll also add text one into the document. Add text one and PDF doc dot add text. and later we are closing the pdf writer we are closing the document and these are some by default things that we need to do uh, with our like for for saving and downloading the file and that's it let's save and try it again where the pdf writer shows okay pdf writer is shown missing i guess pdf writer is another new git package that we need to install so i'll go to manage new git package browse pdf Writer, it was right. Let me see its name again. PDF writer, yeah. So it's PDF writer. Well, it should work fine with text. I text, but let's see if it. MVC PDF writer. I'm not getting the one which I need. Let's try again. Run. I have saved my code and I'm running it again. Let's see what happens. So it is getting built and we found an error. So let's see. Would like to continue? No. Show me. And the error is in PDF writer. So what does the PDF writer stands for? Oh, oh, okay, okay. Definitely, it should have happened. We did, we didn't add of code over here, which are these ones. These are important. This, this one was added, but this wasn't added, which, which is what. So let's save it, and I guess it should work fine this time. Yeah, as you can see, the red thing has been gone from so it. Should work fine this time. What is shit? Kick it. Okay, okay, I got it. Okay, um, what we need to do is we'll add a new text, which is new paragraph, and uh, it should be a new chunk. Okay. So what we need to do over here is we need. We we are adding a new paragraph called text. So paragraph text equal to new paragraph ticket and uh, this should not be text. This should be let's say text head and we'll have. Add text head here. Text head. Okay. Now this should work. Let's run and see. Yes, there was no error found. And now we, when we go to the, when we run it, and when we go to our project, when when we run our project, so let's go to home page and see the whole thing together. This is our home page, which is MS Inspire. Register for our upcoming event. When I click on register, it takes me to this register page, which is which says register for our upcoming event, which has this name, email ID, organization, the text box. So let's say Vedant 
पहल नेम माय ईमेल आईडीज abc@msinspire.com ऑर्गेनाइजेशन लेट्स से माइक्रोसॉफ्ट एंड व्हेन आई क्लिक ऑन सबमिट a new file has been downloaded when i open this new file it's getting loaded so, yeah as you can see a ticket was created like a pdf file was created which says ticket with my all information inside it the next thing which one can do is you know customize this ticket with all those colors and stuff which you can get from the itex shop package uh, from their information and also you can add qr code barcode to this ticket and stuff and this is how you, you can customize your project to make it better and this is all about the um web application how one can create a web application using asp.net and uh, you have you can all customize these tabs add new tabs you customize this application name and you can use this web app for multiple things we can create a multiple projects using this and this was all about it let's the last thing the last segment of this workshop is to deploy this project so this was on our local system but now let's deploy it in order to deploy it you the things that you want is azure subscription and make sure that you have signed in into the visual studios using your the same email id that you have as as your subscription in so as you can see on the on, in here i am signed in using bellbet and then at the student partner dot and when i click on view so let's me let me save it once again yeah final save when i click on let's see there should be an option to publish your application let's see let's see yeah project i guess yeah mm, no what is in there build yeah inside build you have option for publish event ticket creation right i'll click on publish so you have multiple option which is the first one is app services yes i want to azure app services and uh, select existing because i guess i have no i'll have to create a new one so let's click on create new create a profile so a new app service has been is been getting created so name of the app service is this one i'm using my subscription which is the visual studio enterprises resource group central india hosting plan which is the s1 hosting plan you can check this on the azure portal that uh, if you want to check about the pricing and stuff you can check that on azure portal and application inside so i don't want it it's not compulsory so let's leave it in case you want something where like in this case we did create a form but the creator of the form is not getting known of who is submitting the form right so you need to create a sql database as well so you can create this from here and connect your form to sql database so that whenever one one person submits the form the thing should be appended in your sql database and you come to know who has submitted the form and we'll click on create so it is creating my app service it might take a moment because it is all all together creating a new resource group in your azure thing so i guess it's created now yeah it's created and now you're just getting a summary for it i will directly click on publish and when i click on publish it's getting published to this link Uh, and I'll keep this link copied. No, this this isn't. No, that's the, not the one. So it's getting published. Let's wait for it. Almost done. So there are many things related to this this web app. We just saw a segment which pretty much told you basics about how one can create a web app and add functionalities to it. But you can do a lot of things, which is like infinitely lot. And uh, like you can create new apps you can add, uh, for all those apps that you want to create you can look for new packages and those all packages will help you create your application like your web application uh, moreover inside that web application you can uh, add sql databases you can add docker support um, you can integrate it with other azure web services and you can create a whole some project which will look beautiful and definitely 
will be very fruitful if in case you are going for hackathons and stuff and the pricing for this web app when you deploy it on azure is very less so again that is a advantage for a person who is using this because it's it's a very the price is very low and um, this is how you can create a web app in visual studio 2019 and publish it in azure which will be like published worldwide web like anyone from the world globally can access your web app and um, it is taking a while so what we'll do is i'll get back when it it gets completed like once it gets published so as you can see it is published and we have our website ready which is event ticket creation some number some random numbers which i forgot to edit while publishing it that dot is your website dot net so it's getting loaded and now this is published on world wide web so anyone can access it and i'll be putting the link Uh, of this website in the description so you can just check out the website with web app which i have created uh during this workshop so it is as you can see this is done that, that's done i mean that's it that that's it everyone i mean this is how you do it and do try it to check it out uh let me move back to my presentation this was all about asp.net web app and uh, let me move to my presentation just to show making a web can... app and deploying it into the internet in less than a, like 45 minutes good work sir mm-hmm. yeah that was it so that was me vidans you can follow me on twitter facebook instagram linkedin or all of those uh, social network that you know about i am everywhere you can just uh, reach out to me if you need any assistance with your web app and this is like young vedant na <laughs> no this is me even right now i mean i look younger than before <laughs> wow <laughs> vedant doesn't age does he <laughs> uh so yeah that's it thank you for joining us at ms inspire sundaresh we're back to you sundaresh and ganesh amazing vedant it was very well structured and the thing you thought in this workshop might help many new people who are you know not new to this dot net framework to get you know integrated with it and learn more about it asp and basically dot net is a very rich framework and microsoft is investing very heavily in it so right you know. and you know that the best part is that when i started with this thing so this wasn't something which i learned because i was just randomly learning this was related to one of the project which i was creating and i also linked the link for that project in the description um so i was creating that project and i learned it while then and surprisingly i just did it in a day or two and that's how easy it is because that was i started from scratch because i didn't know html much because i wasn't into web development I wasn't into C sharp and stuff, so I didn't know much about it. I learned everything in a day, and that's how easy and that's how many resources uh, you have on the internet, and you can create it easily. As you can see, you, when when you create the web app, you have the default things ready for you, and you just need to edit it. And moreover, you don't need to even you code the HTML. You can even drag and own. drop stuff, right? Yeah, that's yeah, that's amazing, right? So, and you have yes. been also. you know i just wanted to put in there this like if you are watching this and you want to have a workshop with us uh, there will be a link in the description which you can just uh, fill that form out uh, it's very easy like and you know uh, whenever you fill the form just contact us directly or you will be getting a message from our team as soon as possible it's great to provide this content to you uh, for taking you know workshops all around the world all the content that was given by vedant is present in a blog format which link is provided down and you know all the code will be available on our repo so i don't know i guess that's it well thank you for having me here Thank you for giving me great, this opportunity. Great work, Vedant. Also, do you want to say anything? 
Yeah, uh, yes, I was just going to say like the the blog link and everything would be in repository. And you, if you if you are aiming to do a workshop based on this, like you have learned ASP and there are so many uh, episodes before this. And if you want to arrange a workshop on this, you will find these projects, presentations and everything in the repository. And the link will be below in the description. And also if you want to give, uh, like you want to organize a work, inspired workshop session, there will be also a link. And I think Ganesh has said that. Okay, so thanks everyone for joining. Thanks Ganesh. Thanks Vedant for tuning in today. And thank you everyone for tuning into the episode. We'll meet you soon and probably this Saturday. So bye bye.